What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video on the golf. So, in the last episode, you saw we had a bit of a break from fabrication and welding. Uh, nipped to see our friends at D2D Blasting to get a few bits of the engine uh, blasted up and they are looking absolutely mega. If you don't know what I'm talking about, click in one of these corners. There's a link there, go and watch that episode. Uh, nice little break from um, panel work. So yeah, they look amazing. If you've got any wet blasting needs, hit them up, great guys. So this episode is gonna be about sorting out this rear beam. So in my um, inexperience, I suppose, um, and excitement to just go cutting and ripping things off the car, um, I didn't make or think about making any sort of a jig to hold the rear mounting, well, the rear mounting point in place for the front of the rear beam. Now, I should have probably made a jig and it bolted into areas of the car to get it back in exactly the right place. Well, I didn't, did I? So we've got to try and get it back in the right place now. Um, I've had a few people say I should have left it in the car. The mounting shouldn't have come out of the car. Um, there's no way of getting it back in the right place. I didn't have a choice. It had to come out. The, so you've got essentially this inner chassis rail here. You've got these two holes that, that it comes to. It welds to this. It also welds to the uh, inner sill and it also welds to sort of the back edge and near the inner arch. So I had to remove the chassis rail and completely remove the inner sill. So there's absolutely no way of leaving it in there because it doesn't actually touch the boot floor so it's not as though it's welded at the, the seat the rear seat floor it's not as though it's welded to the rear seat floor so everywhere that it was welded to was removed um so yeah i didn't really have a choice so what we're going to do now is try and get it back in into the right place now so i came in yesterday um but didn't film anything um i don't know it didn't really feel very well at all i wanted to get a couple of hours in and sort of get a game plan together with this so what i've done is Chuck the, strip the um, rear hook, the rear brakes and everything off of this, um, taking the roll bar off, brake lines, a few other bits, just line it up a little bit. We've chucked the shocks back in for now um, and chucked the beam on. Now it's bolted the other side. Uh, I think I'm only on the front is sort of down and then back sort of half a turn. So I've got a bit of play, a bit of movement, but it's roughly in the right place. Rear shocks are obviously bolted in that side. This side's undone because I've removed this. So I've had to cut this inner arch out and this bit out here that I spent quite a lot of time making and making look neat uh, for access because yeah I didn't realise that it needed to get in there we now know for the next side though so we did all that got it all in the right place and then removed it all cleaned the areas back I've primed them in uh, well through primer the mounting point is on the floor down there that's been um, pure rust coated first I did that yesterday afternoon that's all dried off, cleaned that back, and it has now been uh, well through primed as well. So the bracket sits there. We bolted it to this, bolted the rear shock on, dropped it down and put a wedge down here to get the height right, which we measured off of here to about here. And we did the same on both sides. That measurement was then the same. So we then had to work out what the beam was doing with this. We'd got the height right. We had to work out what this was. As I'm on my own. Front to back measurement, we've gone from this here, on there, pair of mole grips, just to hold that on. Pull that all along, and then measure to the front edge, if you can see that because of these pliers, front edge of this beam, just pulling the tape tight so it's straight. We've got 1986. We've just checked that the other side as well. I'll leave you there, you've seen what I've done. 1986. So we know that from that front or lower arm point to this point on this is 1986 on this side. The other side from that point to the same point is 1986 as well. So we know that it's, it's that line and that line are parallel. We've now got to work out the height or make sure that it's sitting correctly that way so what I've done for that is on here you've got this 
piece here, which is where the sh this chassis rail goes to. It's nice and flat. And what I'm doing is putting the tape measure down onto that point. And then that measures 72 millimeters. So from there to there is 72 mil. So we know that is that on that side. Do the same on this side, but this side will be about a mil different because we've still got this chassis leg on. So up here, and that measures 71 mil. So we've got 1986 <clears throat> front to back, both sides, and we've got 72 mil that side and 71 mil this side, which is right because we've got one mil of this chassis rail on here. So in theory, that is in the correct place and that can now be welded in. But what I want to do is, I think I'm going to check from those bolts just to make sure that it's, we're gonna diagonally check it as well. So just trying to find points that I can use to check more than that measurement and that measurement, we're gonna diagonally check this now. Trying to not damage these threads. Trying to undo these a bit so they're not really tight at all. But just holding this in to place. Like that. This would be a hell of a lot easier with two people. Just pull this over here again and that measures 1842 to so that straight of that 1842 let's try the other side and that one measures 1842 so we now know that is in the correct position it measures the same from the front to the back, front to the front of the car, to the front edge of this, both sides. It measures the same in the height, both sides. And it also now measures diagonally the same. So that beam is now square, level, parallel, any term you want to do in the car. So we can get this welded in now and be confident that it's in the correct place. Thank God for that. I've been not been looking forward to doing this, but it doesn't seem to have actually been too bad. So let's, before we go moving anything, let's chuck a couple of tacks on this, get this welded in so we know it's sort of held in place and then we'll get it welded in. Cheers sports fans, welded in. So I've seen welded it at the front, as you can see, just there. We've got a good penetration on that. And then round here, we've got all these blobs of weld, um, but I turn the welder right up because this bracket is quite thick. Turn the welder right up, turn the wire speed up. Um, and I've checked, and we've got some penetration at the back as well, which is nice. So yeah, they're nice and stuck on. I've also welded it at the back here and just dressed that up. You can see the weld coming through there. So yeah, I have worked, turned it right the way up without all that weld coming through. But I'm pretty happy that that is nice and strong now. I mean, I know it's not on the road, but I'm pulling and pushing it all about and it isn't going anywhere. I have just all measured it again and it measures exactly the same as it did. So we know it's not moved um, when we have welded it. I've now got to go back, or got to go in now 
prime all these welds and bits, clean it up. And I've got to put this piece in that I cut out um, and sort out this inner arch. Again, we'll take the beam off first, so get a bit of weight off the, uh, off the car so it's easy to turn over. Then we can start looking, putting this chassis rail in. So this mountain is now all welded in. Um, in here is all prime. This is nice and solid. Um, we have sorted this out, which I did a bit of work to because I wasn't quite happy with exactly how it fitted. So I've done a bit of cutting and shutting on that. Now it fits absolutely mega where I want it to fit. All the contours touch where they need to when it's all clamped in place. So I'm well happy with that. Um, this rear chassis rail is in position as it was before. I need to take that off now, uh, clean the back of it, prime it all up, and clean these brackets up so that can then be sort of clamped in place, ready to be welded in. I've also sort of started making a bit of a game plan for the outer sill on this side. So I've gone along and trusty wood screws, which actually with the correct drilled hole are actually pulling it together pretty nice. Um, I've then gone back through when these are together. I've put a masking tape straight line on it as to where I want to cut. I've gone through it then with, a, with a, an angle grinder with a one mil cutting disc on it. And when you've gone through, that is absolutely perfect for us to tack on. Now I have bought as well, just to give us a little bit of extra help with it. My lights, love my lights. I bought these. So these are like a flush panel clamp of some sort, I don't know what they're called, but, but yeah. They were cheap off eBay and seem to work pretty well. So what my idea is going to be, we're gonna cut a bit of this because I wanted to use these all the way along it, but I'm not gonna be able to get in to put them together. They're quite difficult to get together, which, I mean, there must be a, a knack to it. Someone will tell me, I'm imagining. So push that through there, like so. That. Bit. That, up. that is absolutely spot on just there. So what my idea is going to be is we're going to tack that there, we'll then undo that a bit, slide it along, we can slide it along, get that up there, and then every inch we're going to put a tack, but we can use this to get it all bang on in the right place. So that's the idea at the moment. Hopefully it's going to work. Um, I've cut the front corner of this off purely for pretty much this reason and everything going in the correct place. It's a press panel. It isn't exactly the same as the sort of car. So I've cut this off. This will then get cut and welded back into here at some point when I'm... Um, I want to get this on first, make sure it works. Um, so yeah, that's my idea with that. Um, but the first thing that I want to do is get these two chassis rails welded in and sort of to a point. chassis rails on the passenger side rear of the car hell yeah so we've spot welded them along the top spot well plug welded them uh, seam welded there same again here seam welded there um, plug welded around the edge and they look awesome they're nice and solid 
So that mount's in the correct place. I'm now gonna make a start on getting this sill on, which is a major thing, because then the outside of the car starts to look like a car again instead of a big holy shell. So, get this turned over and then we'll jump on by putting that on. I am excited about it, honestly, I'm just knackered. Right guys, it's time to now start looking at this sill. So, I explained a little bit earlier about the way that I'm gonna go about doing it. Um, Hopefully it's going to work. It's all feeling nice and flush here. So we're going to start just moving along and yeah, do it. we ain't going to get it all done tonight because um, oh, I'm going to have to go soon because it's getting a bit late in the day. Um, but we'll certainly get some of it done um, and at least get a start made on it. Um, so there's no more faffing about. Let's just get the welder on and get welding this sill up. So, let's give it a go. And there's that sill tacked on in place, feeling nice and flush all the way along. It's a bit wobbly, but where I've cut it, but it feels awesome all the way along. It's gone a little bit tight in areas, so I weld um, the bits, that, the areas that have got gaps that we want, the one mil gap. I weld them first, and then we'll go in with the grinder and just release a little bit of pressure where it's a bit close. Because if I go welding it where the metal's basically touching, as it as the weld cools, it pulls the metal together, so it'll start, it will sort of, it will create a, a point, if you like, on the weld. So um, we'll release a little bit of tension there, but that technique is brilliant and looks like it's worked pretty damn well. I'm well happy with that. It's starting to look like a car again. Hopefully it's all in the right place. But yeah, absolutely mega. So we need to weld this all up now. Um, and then get this front piece on because I, I removed this front corner from this just to make it easier for getting it on and in the right place. So we need to cut that off, get that sorted and weld that on to sort that corner out. I've just started working on this front corner. We've trimmed a little bit off, got it all clamped in place, a couple of screws in to hold it. I'm going to try and cut through on these lines here um, to get it to sit back in the right place. And then this piece here, we're going to have to put some slits in this to try and knock this back into shape to fit this contour of the arch, but it should be doable. So let's just get on with it really. No point in chatting about it. Let's just roll. Keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left. And there is that corner all sorted and cleaned up, primed everything, cut into position. This obviously has got to come up, but as when when this is welded, we'll then pull this up, get it all in the right place, but it's looking pretty good. So, let's get onto the, onto the time lapse. Um, tack this bit, plan's gonna be sort of tack here, I think. Tack here and get it in the right place. And then we'll try and pull all this into the right place. So let's just get on with that. Speak of the truth when it's tainted. I fell into a big black hole. There we go. That 
corners on. I've not welded this lot, like, fully welded this and started dressing it. Um, it needs a, obviously a bit more work. There's a few bits of like, holes and things where I screwed bits on that need doing. I need to weld a bit around here, tidy it all up, but it's on solid and looking a hell of a lot better than it did. So now it's time to move on to putting this corner on. I'm gonna do it the same process as I've done it before. Clamp it there. I might put a couple of screws in it just to hold it. We'll send the grind up through those bits there, tidy it all up, take it off, clamp it in place and get it welded on. So that's that piece all cut and sorted and done. Um, did it in exactly the same way as I've done the other piece, overlaid the oversized panel, screwed it into it, pull this panel into the right place and pull them together. Put a bit of a wedge in here to pull this out because it's, it's pulling back a little bit. Um, and then we sent the grinder through the whole lot. Now, I did go back through and um, offer this back on and cut another mill out of it because it was a little bit tight in places, but it's now sitting where it wants to sit. So we can put a spacer in there to give us our gap for welding and we start welding this up. Out of luck this time, I'm stuck in reverse. I gotta get away now. So I'm just sat here editing this video and realised I haven't done a link explaining that I'd finished that rear corner or got it tacked in place and I was now going to move on to sorting out the rear arch. Right, this rear arch then. I've spent a bit of time, I've trimmed um, the, this arch lip from the bigger panel because we don't need any of that, we're only using the outer lip. So I've trimmed that out to make it a bit easier, a bit easier to see what's going on. Uh, I've put it on in the right place, clamped it up and then I've got some screws and drilled it and screwed it on and held it in place, took the clamps off. I've then, I'm probably making, I'm probably making a bit of a meal out of this, but I've then got a plastic arch trim that goes over it, put it on and drawn to the edge of that. I've then put that onto this piece again as well uh, and drawn on that as well to get it in the right place. So we know we've got the same mark on both pieces. Um, and then put this back on and sort of buy on and look at what's going on, look to measure these bits and I've now, put this back on, or I've, I've now just came in freehand with a pen, just draw inside of the line. So now I'm going to screw this back on, get it in the same place as it was, and then we're going to go through all that with the grinder, and in theory, should be in the right place. Apologies for the noise again, they haven't been in that long, literally came in there as soon as I started doing this. Um, so hopefully, we'll get this on now, get it cut out, it's right, if not, I'm going to be contacting Heritage for another one. Come on, why won't you reappear? Things that I said came out totally. Right, so now that's back on. We'll get the grinder. Cut through there. Hopefully, not going through the inner arch that we've put in. Um, yeah, we'll cut this out. Let's give it a go. You got me stone cold. There's that on, all cut in, sitting where it needs, but it needs a bit of manipulating, but as you tack it and weld it, we'll be able to push it and pull it and get it in the right place. Um, we've got a nice gap there, but it's, it's a bit close, these bits. So I'm just gonna go back through with the grinder like I did um, on the rear corner, and I think I did it on the sill as well. Um, we're just gonna go back, make a bit of a gap here, um, get it all cleaned up, get it all painted, and then we can start tacking this bit on. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack this on as well, get this bit sort of to a point so we know that it's dealt with, or it's on at least, um, and then I'll go back and weld it all up at the same time um, in one hit, just so that, yeah, why not, what I want to do. So, let's, uh, while that's now on, let's send the grinder through, spray the bits, and roll. There we go, all trimmed, primed, sorted, screwed back on into place, needs a bit of pushing and pulling to get it on. So it shouldn't be a problem, we should be able to push and pull that mini manipulate it a bit um, as we're welding it on um, to get it all bang on in the right place. I mean, it feels pretty 
pretty good. Um, but we'll push it and pull it as we're holding and tacking it all together. So yeah, jump on with that, get that done. So there is this side looking back like a solid carrier. Put up the hole in the arch, ignore that. We've got new rear corner on, new rear arch on, new sill on, and then this front corner obviously is included in the sill as well. Now it isn't completely finished, we've got bits of where we screwed it and things to fill in, um, we've got tidy joins up, we've got to fully weld it all and then clean it back, same on here, and then put these holes in. But they're on, and the car is looking like a car again. Um, yeah, massive confidence booster this week. I don't know what it is, there's something about it. I'm so happy that they're on. It, everything is it's nearly in, in near enough the right place. I mean, it, it's smooth, it's blush, it's where it needs to be. We'll get them welded, get them dressed, and hopefully it's gonna look absolutely mega when it's done. So we've got the outside of this bit done, we've got to then jump on. I think the next thing after these bits is probably gonna be starting on the floor. Um, trying to form a bit of a game plan now. I've got the uh, front edge of the rear seat to fix, um, but I think I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get the floor fitting and in, clamped in place. Then I'll make it to that. So I know what edge I've got to run to and things. If I try to make it now and it's too big or too small, we'll get the floor in, get it clamped in so we know where we are. So I just wanna say a massive, massive thank you to Heritage Park Centre for supporting me and sponsoring this rebuild. If you haven't already, go and check out their website, heritageparkcentre.com, where using the code CHAMBERS at the checkout will get you 10% off your order. Massive thanks to those guys for working with me on this project and for giving me the code to give back to you guys. Absolutely blown away still that they wanna work with me. It amazes me. It, none of this would have been possible without them. And working with those guys would definitely not have been possible without you guys. So, as I mentioned in the past few episodes, we're chasing 20,000 subscribers by Christmas. We're closing in on 16,000, so we've not got too far to go. Every single little interaction that you guys have with the channel helps within YouTube's algorithm of getting the channel out there to a wider audience. Be it liking, commenting, subscribing, or clicking the little bell to get notifications of when we post a video. So I know a lot of you guys do already interact with the videos, liking, commenting um, and most of you do subscribe. I do have quite a few people watching that aren't subscribed, so if you aren't subscribed, why not? Click that little subscribe button, then click the bell to get notified of when we post a video. So as ever, thank you all so, so much for watching. I do really, really appreciate it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Um, it's, I've really enjoyed this one because the car's starting to look like a car again. Um, next one will be me probably tackling and trying to get this floor in, which I am not looking forward to because you can't get it in the altar do what we've done here. But anyway, we'll work that one out in the next video. Until then, guys, enjoy.